Can I film uh, this? Yeah. Dude, until 5.30, you can film what you want, okay? I'll tell you when you have to put your camera away or where. What did you say before? Oh, I've been keeping people alive in the city for years. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. There's a sim. Now, sim is somebody I met in a club. And the reason I met him is because my New Year's resolution in 2018 was to be more bold, which means if I see someone that I want to talk to, I'm going to go up and talk to them. If I see somebody that I want to talk to, a friend, a potential love interest, whoever, I'm going to talk to you because I know that if I don't, I'm going to go home and wonder what could have been. I'm lucky because I was thinking about coming to Israel and you happen to be Israeli and so I'm here and I'm lucky again because you have a car going from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and I'm in the car. Sim's back and he's already yelling at me because I feel bad for filming right now. I don't want to you know, disrespect anyone's Shabbat. It's not and Shabbat you're like, yet. it's not it's Shabbat, Shabbat yet, let's film. Shabbat is the seventh day. It's basically the seventh day of creation. I believe in the Bible. Then on the seventh day, God said, rest. It's the day where the Jews take a day off. We don't work, don't turn on lights, don't drive cars. Well, that Shabbat guy's working. Eat. Someone's working over here. It's not Shabbat yet. <laughs> Oh, this is also overwhelming. This city is so overwhelming because there's so much happening here. There's so much to cover in one, one like goofy YouTube video. And he wants to stay for one day. Hey, I just extended my night. Ooh. My first question of this video, I have so many questions. The ultra Orthodox Jews and then the more modern Jews, do they feel like you're not Jewish enough or do you feel like they're doing a lot? Or? Well, I grew up ultra Orthodox. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. They don't know better and they're not doing it enough. Okay. But then if you go and ask more of the modern, anything is better than nothing. But again, that's a stereotype. You handled that one well. <laughs> Damon's really worried about um, filming. I'm Think so, really, I just yeah. want to make everybody happy. They make I'm it very obvious. Okay, so then I'm going to just gonna do know. me until then. I wanted to hear about your bar mitzvah. Well, I was ultra orthodox then. So yeah. basically what you normally do is you go there's so much to it though. Okay, I think we all should know that trying to like cram all yeah. this into one YouTube video is not gonna happen. I'm trying to get the gist of this, so you don't yeah. have to like basically so you're not representing all of Israel. So, so you back read for up. the Torah. The year is split into different weeks, like split up over the Bible, and that's your week. So you basically learn it up and then you go in synagogue, stand in front of everyone and you read out. You recite the entire the tractate, and then people throw candies at you and you're done. You cover up and what kind of candy? And you can't, like uh, like coffees or whatever. Ooh. You pick up the, the Torah scroll. Like the entire Bible, like this handwritten. I hope with pen, not pencil. <laughs> at what age are you having your bar mitzvah? For guys, it's 13. For girls, it's a bat mitzvah, and it's 12. So, like, what if you just don't hit puberty till you're like 17? Because I was a late bloomer, so like, I'm I was not an adult at 13. I don't know. Yeah. Nope. Nothing to do with. I guess it does, but like, you know, they decided this a long time ago. This city has baby fever. Why are there so many children? <laughs> Very normal to see families of seven, eight, nine, ten. And how do they afford that? They don't. <laughs> There's like these places called a kolel. Basically, you get paid by like some rich philanthropist or something who's like funding these places because they want people to study mm -hmm. like the Torah. And then basically, you get a little salary to just sit and to study the study. Torah. Yeah. But again, how they fund it? You'll have like five people in one bedroom. It's not a very luxurious lifestyle. How many brothers and sisters do you have? You're like, 16? You have eight? Yeah. Sam? Nine including me. I have four, no, I have five nieces and nephews. See, this is a new one, I just forgot. <laughs> this? I hadn't thought of this. I want to build a hot tub on my roof. And... It's, do you understand how, like, why this is so interesting? You're living in the old city of Jerusalem, like, one of the most sacred places on earth, and then you're like, yeah, I want to build a hot tub. <laughs> Wait, did you tell him why, how we got up here? No! He was trying to get me kicked out of this country. <laughs> totally. Do you like living here? Oh, it's sick. Didn't you say you, like, you're so happy that you live here now? Like a few years ago, you, you didn't like Jerusalem yeah, and now you so love it? Growing up in it, you're just like, oh, there's tourists, it's so annoying. Then I started getting like, interested in history and I studied it in school and I was just like, fascinated. But I'm 
not sure about that one, so don't put that one. <laughs> Did you play at this playground when you were a little baby? No, 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 uh, that's another thing. Growing up too, we stuck to like our neighborhood. Like I'd go through this gate, drop a gate, and I'd go to my neighborhood, and that's it. You wouldn't go to the Muslim quarter really. You don't go to the Christian quarter really. So you stayed you, in your lane. You stayed in your lane. You just going back from school. I started walking through the other areas. I'm like, whoa! I've lived here my whole life, but I've never seen this. When you'd go home from high school back in the day, you would. Walk this way every day. This is what I do twice a day. You would walk this. I would walk this every day. I know it's crazy. I would take a car to and from high school, <laughs> and a yellow American <laughs> school bus. This is what we have to go to to find parking. Clearly, the real estate's like limited, so is it super expensive? Oh yeah. But if you mainly have religion as your job, if you're a pastor, you study your religion for your living, how are you making enough money to live here? Ah, that's a good question. Ah. My parents, they bought it like 30 years ago. The religious people, I guess they, they live in really tiny homes, and sometimes they're like renting it from like maybe family or things like that, at least in the Jewish area. Wait, so Shabbat is approaching and there's nobody outside right now, I feel like. Yeah, everyone's getting ready. So everyone's at home, like showering, like using their last bits of electricity or <laughs> the phone <that's> <laughs> post Instagram pictures many people are still at the market you know getting their last beer Okay, I will walk literally three miles out of my way to avoid that market on Shabbat. On my flight here, I took LL Airways, and I got this little piece of paper that said my meal was kosher. How do you find meals that are kosher? How do I know if I'm eating kosher or not? So if it's at a restaurant, you'll have a certificate, and there's different levels of it. And then for food, you'll see any food packaging, look at any store, you'll have like a little like signature mark. So if there's a K on it, we can get that one. Yeah, if it's made in Israel, it's usually kosher. Like what qualifies it being kosher? It's like prepared? A certain way, right? Depends what food. Can't eat pig. You can't eat meat and milk together. Can't uh, cook them together. So all those qualifications and more. If it's at a restaurant, it has to be under supervision, Jewish supervision, by a qualified rabbi. He's called a mashkiach. But what will he say? He'll be like, no. Nope. Just has to be there in order to make sure like nothing, no shit's going down. Like just in case someone mixes meat and milk together. Also, restaurants, you have to have a separate kitchen, like meat kitchen and a milk kitchen. Are there? Vegan kosher restaurants then? Oh, vegan, yeah. Because vegan is the easiest way to be. Yeah, there's no That's meat and no milk. Oh, dude, like a dramatic scene. Whoa. <laughs> Do you realize how interesting this is? Yep. So, yeah, basically. Damn, hold up, hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, this is your rooftop. Yeah, this is my roof. I live in the old city my whole life. You built your house here. What's up, dude? How you doing? Hello. Whoa. How you doing, man? Hello. Shabbat shalom. I'm new. It's okay. Every, I can't believe you haven't had this yet. And it's not, she's been here for a week. And he hasn't had this. Okay, but well, I also only know one <laughs> Jewish This person. has nothing to do with cheese puffs. Babies are born with this, like, in their hands. <laughs> like, we grew up, we grow up with this, like, bomb bomb. Bam. Oh. <laughs> and then we mix it with this, like, you mix it. And then this you kind of, like, try it together. This is, like, Fritos and Doritos. And cheese puffs. Don't even try and compare it. Okay, this I'm just sorry, that was different... my fault. Is there How do you like... even hear it? Was there something? Yeah, yeah, I, I can't hear it. That's something happening out there. We're singing to bring in to welcome the Shabbat. Do you guys ever sing for the Shabbat? <laughs> Last night I went to a Shabbat dinner, and I want to say, whether you're religious or not, I love the idea of Shabbat. I know it's mainly for religious purposes, but for me, I just like the idea of being disconnected for one day, Friday evening to Saturday evening. This is supposed to be a full day of rest, so anything you do in your typical weekday, week work week, should not be done on this day. Anything. Everything closes down in Jerusalem, for the most part. Like stores, public transportation. Wait, we're gonna be here tomorrow, we're gonna be here in the tour. Area. But my camera won't be here tomorrow on Shabbat. No, no, you can. This is a Christian Muslim area. There's no issues whatsoever because there's no significance to this day. There are certain Shabbat modes on the elevator. You told me on Shabbat that elevators can't run. 
you can't click the buttons yet. But there's Shabbat elevators. The ones oh. that we're on in Shabbat. They basically stop on every floor. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it just takes a little longer. The dinner, I loved it. There were 15 people around the table. I had like a squash pie. I had seasoned green beans, lots and lots of baked bread. But then because this channel is real, I do want to say at the end of the meal. Camera battery's done. So near the end of the Shabbat meal, I fully expected this to happen um, last evening because I was kind of like the house liberal coming in. The dad and uncle come over and they're like, so we heard there was a lot of backlash of you going to Israel. And since they're obviously very pro-Israel, they wanted to tell me the facts. I told them that I went on a tour from a Palestinian point of view. And I think by me saying that, um, they thought that those were my views. And so they like were really drilling me with the questions of was Palestine ever a country? Or like, do we not have the right to be here? Or, so that was a heated point on both sides. <laughs> Then we got into borders and immigration. So there was a point, I think, where I said something like, um, look, you don't choose where you're born. And sometimes you're born in a privileged developed country out of literally just pure luck. So how could you be so strict with an immigration policy towards somebody who's born in a less fortunate country when they want to come to your more fortunate country? How can you, as somebody who just literally won the lottery, to just be so like non-empathetic towards people who just want the same things that you do that didn't go so well but it's so hard to even have this argument here because everyone uses religion as their their excuse they were chosen by god to have been born in that land as opposed to this other land so i can't argue with that so it just seems like there's very opinionated sides on both sides but it's like no one can genuinely see eye to eye these are a few voice notes with my friend Charlene, um, Charlene from Paris, who actually was a subscriber, turned a friend. I explained my Shabbat dinner to her, and then she responded this. I had a friend that was Jewish. She was in New York when I was living there. We talked with a Palestinian there, but like a New Yorker. And they fought, like they, 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 they couldn't agree on anything. Mais oui, merci pour toute l'explication, parce que ça m'intéresse vachement. Mais tu sais, c'est super dur d'avoir un vrai, d'avoir une vraie histoire et une vraie opinion. Parce que si tu parles avec des, des, des personnes d'Israël, ils vont te dire quelque chose. Si tu parles avec des Palestiniens, ils vont te dire quelque chose. Et c'est super dur de, de, de se mettre entre les deux. Et... Exactement. The stores are opening! It is Saturday evening, which is their Sunday night. The work week starts on Sunday. After Shabbat is over, stores start opening up around 8 p.m., 7 p.m., I think. And they're only open for a few hours so you can like get your groceries before the work week. I think it's really interesting that like things open so late for a short amount of time just so you can run out and grab your stuff. Oh, this is the best thing in all of Israel. And I can't even read what's in it. Oh my hummets. <laughs> Everywhere you go in Jerusalem, you hear American English, and it's because Jewish students from abroad come here for their birthright, which I have plenty of questions about. Sim, I need some answers. Simha, yes. explain birthright. There are so many Americans here on their birthright. It's like a free trip to Israel if you're yeah, Jewish. if you're Jewish. So does the government pay for it? The government helps fund it, yeah. It's just Jewish donors. With the hopes that these students would come over here and then settle here, right? They just wanna, not necessarily, they just wanna teach the as many Jewish people, like, the history. Oh. Damn it, Sam, learn how to use a camera. <sighs> well, we missed him buying coffee. I spoke Hebrew and everything, I said Shalom. Uh, uh, I typed in the Jewish calendar into Google, and it said year 5779. We have a different calendar. And do you follow that? I don't, but I did. According to Jewish tradition, the world is only 5,779 years old. On your birth certificate, it says like year 5,000 something. It would say both. I'm almost done with my questions. You realize you're the only person I can ask. A lot of Jewish people wear black. What the hair means, what is the yarmulke. Black and white, it's a white shirt, black pants. Basically that's high fashion for Poland. That's the European Jewish look. Hair covering is to preserve the woman's full beauty for the husband. Is there anything that a man has to cover so he sh like conserves his beauty for his wife? Oh, yarmulke. If you have something on your head, remember there's something. There's a higher power. If the yarmulke represents like a higher power than you on men, then why wouldn't women wear that? That's a good question. You can start asking 
asking questions like that, that's never gonna end. There's a uh -oh. Thank you, next. He made this. My tour guide Sim is giving me a tour of the Mehani Huda market. <laughs> no, but you have me tasting all these like super yeah, yeah, yeah. sugary things, and I'm like, give me a juice. This is apparently a juice that's made out of uh, a leaf or something, that, which is illegal in Europe. Yeah, it's like good for like sexual drive or whatever. Don't need any more of that. <laughs> Banned as illegal. And it's up there with uh, some other top drugs. Oh God. It's it's very energy, it's high. How many guts did you have this morning? <laughs> I have guts, yes. This is pineapple guts. Pineapple guts. It's like kiwi. How dare you. <laughs> Simha just pointed out this sign that says, all in Hebrew. Especially females do not walk around in non-modest clothing. What is considered modest would be a closed shirt, a long sleeve, a long skirt, no pants, and no slim clothing. And then it says, please do not interfere with the holiness of this neighborhood and our everyday lives of Jewish people that are dedicated to God and his Bible and his Torah. Which is why my camera will be like this most of the time. <laughs> Book, it most likely will not have a drawing of a female. You see how he's wearing the yarmulke? Oh, I was wrong. They all open from this side too. That's Didn't you say it was? I put the book down by this, accident. This, like that. Be, this is not a religious book, so you could put it this way. But that's so interesting that they, they re, you guys read from this way and you read from right to left. You read from right to left. Yeah. Yeah. Army began um, enlisting girls, Jewish girls, um, especially girls who um, became religious. I thought they would be for it. They're not for it. The army is not suitable for religious women. It sometimes mixes with men, and it's not. There's no Jewish values as much. We're in the yarmulke store. This is where Sim used to buy his yarmulke. I used to buy my yarmulke. This strip right here means like what community you're kind of part of. Like I went to school, and you weren't allowed to wear this. Only this. But literally, you see, there's six triangles, but some have like four triangles, and so you'd think that everyone's like, everyone dresses the same, but no. One, two, three, four, so that, that's a different... It's a different style. Like, how do you keep it on the back of your head? Oh, there's, uh, there's either pins you use. You get pins. Pick it on and it opens up like that. So, you pointed out that they all use like 2006 Nokia's. phones, Nokia's. Yeah. Why? Because smartphones basically can give you access to information that you don't have. Explicit content. Even the outside world. So it's a kosher phone. Yeah. It's called a kosher phone. It basically just doesn't have texting or internet or just phone calls. So now they are adapting to it and there are okay. more... You could see smartphones with people and basically it's just kosher smartphones and it has the filters. You could use, let's say, music or you might even have WhatsApp. I know, I know. Whoa! What are they listening to? Oh, uh, only Jewish music. So there's a, a law where you can't listen to female vocals, like female voices. That's unfortunate for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I lived in New York for five years and you would sometimes see Orthodox Jews on the subway and they'd be in groups, but I'm just so curious how they maintain like their community despite like the young children getting on the train and seeing people from, people with like pink hair, like piercings and yeah, tattoos. It's definitely, yeah. it's definitely a lot harder for them there because they're surrounded by this stuff. I think they just like, Implanted into her brain so much from the beginning that what anything around him is wrong. Kind of like have a filter. You look at it. Growing up, I remember just like walking and just not even Apple. seeing them. What, wait, what does this one say? You might be eligible for legal cannabis. Wow. The kids here are much more sheltered. Yeah. Like crazy. So they have a program called Ergun. Ergun. Yeah. yeah. It's basically. Everyone rents diras, right? We have apartments. There's hundreds and hundreds of apartments. Everyone in the dira doesn't have smartphones or any uh, anything that accesses the internet, so they just hook you up. Like every week, they send tons of food. They send cleaning ladies. They send. Uh, no way. If you have some microwave. Yeah, if everyone doesn't have. No, there's a lot of guys that have smartphones. I don't know. Have smartphones and still getting hooked up. No, you have to sign in front of her. In front of her. Oh, it's, it's legit. Oh no! Y'all are falling loose. <laughs> <laughs> 
These guys back here are up here on the roof like building something. When I was in Brooklyn, a street light went out and the entire Jewish community came out to like fix it all. They don't reach out to the, the police or they don't reach out to... Yeah, they usually don't use the local authorities. There's like a scandal or something happens, they'll try and uh, solve it within the community. You're gonna miss your, you're gonna miss your favorite tourist. Totally, totally. <laughs> Coming to France. Made it to Tel Aviv. Back in Tel Aviv. All right. Oh, I feel like I've taken a semester-long course, crash course, in Israel and Palestine. The people, the deep, deep divide, the culture, uh, the food. And if we're comparing it to American colleges, I paid one-tenth the price. And I have the stories to tell my grandchildren. This is all coming full circle for me because my 2018 resolution for New Year's was to be more bold. I gotta talk about 2018. You scared me, I thought someone was knocking on the door. Well, me, knocking on 2018's door. <laughs> this year I was pretty bold. In October I was in a club, I went up to Sim and I'm like, hey, are you French? I thought he looked French. And you know, I love French people. He wasn't, he was Israeli. And I was like, jackpot, I was gonna go to Israel anyway. One year later, Sim is my tour guy. Am I the only one who thinks that's cool? These New Year's resolutions that we have are not just these like, let's set cheesy goals for ourselves and hopefully reach them. No, this is like a actually life-changing thing that happened from a silly goal that I set for myself. The fact of the matter is, you never know who you're going to meet. Um, so I did not come here because I support a certain government or not. I came here because I actually wanted to learn. There are so many parts of this culture that I feel like are not part of other cultures. This is such a... This is such a unique country. I will say that. <laughs> unique can't offend anybody, can it? Okay? I'm happy with my decision coming here, the experiences I've had, the people I've met, the things I've learned. Shut up and go. Damon out. I live in the old city and it's I've lived there my whole life and I still feel like a tourist when I walk down the street still. You get that sounds so cliche, god damn it. <laughs> okay, this is the Waldorf Astoria. That one, okay. Up the street over there is King David, the one that was blown up. What? Uh Lesson in life. Only have as many kids as you can handle their immigration process. <laughs> Which means don't have a kid, any kids at all. Yeah. I'm just thinking if Joe and I were to walk around together, yeah. one me is a white male and her is a black woman. Not only race, yeah, but like also different gender. If she's not dressed modestly, someone might say something. Go check out those pillows. Bed bugs. The concept's called Yitzia Minachumot, exiting the walls. Dude, this like Hebrew language, there's a lot of like... The way I go to school every day, like literally the way I walk, someone was stabbed there. This is the Christmas tree. They keep it up until they take it down a week before the next Christmas. That is the second time the housekeeping wants to come in here before checkout. Look at the sheet of guests. There's somebody in here till 11. Yes? What about if you wanted to just take your car and start driving? You can't really go anywhere outside of Israel, right? No, we're surrounded by enemies, pretty much. <laughs> like, I took a flight from Poland to here for like $18. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's, I think it's the law of return, right? If you're Jewish, you can automatically get citizenship here. You have to prove that your mom's Jewish, and basically that you're Jewish, you have to bring all the documents or whatever. And what if my mom's not Jewish, but I want to become Jewish? So you have to convert. Which you is hard. Convert, which is very hard. Your mom gets to be converted for the right reasons. And Damon, Dominique. Dominique what? Damon, Dominique. That's the coolest thing ever. Teen hut! Bye! <laughs> Bye, good luck! <laughs>